what's up guys super quick intro for you i filmed the bulk of this video last night i was trying to get my skin ready to film today today's video is gonna be something a little bit different for me but something i hope to do a lot more on this channel it's just i don't know i feel like i could have done a better job so fingers crossed this is one of those things that i get better with experience but anyway i wanted to make a video on how to love yourself the way i just said that kind of came across like i was talking about in the biblical sense <laughs> So no, uh, actually what I wanted to do is do my skincare while I talk to you guys. I do a lot of videos where I sit and chat and hang out with you, but at the same time, I feel bored with it. So I just wanted to sit down and do skincare and talk to you guys about things that are on my mind, share some skincare tips and tricks, and just spoiler alert, everything I used in the video today worked out amazing. My skin was super hydrated and glowy and awesome when I woke up. So like I said, this video might be a little all over the place. All information about all the products I use are down below, and hopefully this does well and I can do a lot more of it. So anyway, because this is a skincare video, let's travel back in time, shall we? And prepare for me to have a naked face. And a three, a two, a one. Hello friends. So far all I have done is double cleanse my skin. Anytime I do like an at home facial kind of thing, I definitely take the time to cleanse my skin a little bit more thoroughly. Today I used the Wind Oasis Fresh Dissolving Jelly Cleanser. I love this stuff. It kind of feels like honey when it goes on the skin and I typically use it the most when I'm trying to remove makeup, but I was just in the mood for this one today. And it gets off every stitch of everything you have on, sunscreen, makeup, whatever, and it turns into like a milk when you rinse it off and it's just really hydrating and lovely. And then for my second cleanse, I did the Is Clinical Cleansing Complex. This is an OG. It's amazing. The texture of it on your skin feels like silk. Like I bought this before many, many moons ago. I reintroduced it into my collection about three weeks ago. And I was like, I don't remember just vividly loving the texture of this on your skin when you're cleansing, but it's lightweight, it doesn't strip. It's lovely, again, with the lovely. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to toning and essencing. I always do that with my hands. I will link everything down below also if I don't, uh, get super in depth to certain steps that I'm doing, but I'm gonna start off with the I'm from rice toner So the first thing you need to do in order to fall in love with yourself, which is crucial is To learn about your limiting false beliefs So the reason that you need to do this and I argue that you probably need to do it first is because when it comes to the idea of being in love with someone, it's very important to make sure that you're in love with who they are, not who you think they are. And that definitely applies to us as people. In fact, it's kind of funny when you think about it, right? Like most of the time when it comes to positive but false beliefs, it's like we're so quick to have them about other people. And when it comes to ourselves, we tend to have negative but false beliefs. In other words, uh, I don't know how many guys I have seen basically wrapped in red flags that I have just been like, yes, yes, perfect, wonderful, here the one. But sometimes in like my darker moments when it comes to thinking about me and myself, I don't even have remotely that much esteem for myself when I'm in a darker place. And I'm just kind of challenging us to think about how that actually is working. In fact, I saw a quote recently that I really love and it said, hang on, let me get my phone. It said, remember that you have been criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. And ain't that the truth? Lately, I have been really trying to like examine some of the beliefs I have about myself, some of the things that are holding me back and some of the things that are limiting me reaching my fullest potential and the things that I really am passionate about. And I'm coming to understand that it's out of fear and that fear is like predicated on some belief I have about myself that I couldn't tell you where it came from, but I'm positive I'm not the one who installed it there. By the way, for my first essence, I'm doing the Neogen Real Ferment Micro Essence. I love this stuff. Also, I did Retin-A last night, so there's a lot of hydration and uh, soothing and things like that coming in this skincare routine. That's kind of the goal of it. Lots of hydration and facial massage. For my second essence, I'm doing the Aquel and Soko Glam Licorice pH Balancing Essence Mist. My skincare preferences are like a combination of medical grade. I'm trying out more Sephora and Ulta skincare, but it's usually medical grade and K-Beauty. It's my favorite. So going back to the whole thing about beliefs about ourselves and who installed them, this is something that is not comfortable to do all the time. In fact, 
What's really weird about it is when I started thinking about some of the more limiting negative beliefs I have about myself and started tracing back where they came from, I'm starting to realize that that moment is big in my head. <laughs> like it obviously like affected me or traumatized me or whatever the case may be for a reason. I'm not trying to like minimize my experience because it obviously stuck with me for one reason or the other. But as a grown woman who I feel like is very capable of insight and is working on herself and wants to kind of get out of her own way. It's important that I can look at these beliefs, look at the moment that they happened in and be like, does it really make sense anymore that I'm so stuck on that? Like a really good example. Um, one of the things I was called a lot by more abusive people in my life when I was young was that I was stupid. And I think my whole life I've been like weirdly insecure about that. Like I know I'm not stupid. <laughs> I'm actually pretty smart, but I almost feel the need to like either prove that about myself or I feel like I'm stupid, so there's certain things I just will never be able to accomplish, but like intellectually, I know that's not true. Apparently there have been a ton of studies done that show that a large percentage of our memories aren't even real. <laughs> like maybe not so much that they're not real, but we ascribe a lot of meaning to things and a lot of significance to things and things just can impact us in such a severe way. And maybe that situation really isn't the way we remembered it. You guys are going to have to look into this literature on this study because it sounds like I'm trying to minimize or um, downplay stuff you've been through. And like I said, this isn't going to work for everyone. But if you can look back on some of the things that have affected your opinion about yourself, things that really hurt you and that you're still carrying with yourself and like look at it and be like, now that I'm an adult and now that I've had some distance from this thing, if I look at it now, does it actually make sense that it's bothering me so much? Like this, does, did this even really happen to the degree that I remember it? Sounds like I'm trying to gaslight you. I'm not, I'm swear. Just look into it. If that resonates with you, it will make sense. Cause it has for me. Like there are some smaller things that affected like bigger parts of my personality. I'll give a really good example. I had, um, when I was young, a few friends and an ex-boyfriend when I was like in middle school and high school who weren't super nice to me. I tend to gravitate towards those kind of people. And they said things to me that weren't awesome. And one of the things my ex-boyfriend said to me a lot was that like I was white trash and that, um, I don't know. I just was never going to amount to anything in life. He was a jerk and that stuck with me. And I'm not saying that's not a terrible thing that happened. That shouldn't have stuck with me. But like now that I consider the source <laughs> that like, I realized I was just a young kid and people were just being bullies or whatever. I have to ask myself, like, why am I still letting this bother me and affect me in the present tense? It's pointless, right? And this actually kind of makes sense that as people, we tend to cling on to and as assign a lot of meaning to negative meanings, negative memories and negative situations because we have like this primitive part of our brain that's called like our lizard brain the whole reason it exists is to make sure we don't like get eaten by saber-toothed tiger but there's no more saber-toothed tigers there for us there are big scary memories that mold us into people that maybe we don't want to be so like you have to appreciate these things that our brains have a way of like overblowing memory sometimes and then there's situations where like time and place have shaped you into a different person, but like maybe you haven't considered the source of where it came from. And then on top of that, on top of that, you have your lizard brain, like I said, that's entire point is to protect you from anything uncomfortable and scary. So like you have to learn about yourself and your past and which events are worth giving any attention and meaning anymore and how to let them go if they're not working for you. Because the next step, is to cast out the idea that you have to be perfect. I'm gonna move on to serums and using my Osmosis Epic Skin Tool, but the serums that I always use at night are Osmosis Rescue, Osmosis Stem Factor, and Osmosis Case AC11. This AC11 one is gonna be orange and it's gonna look really funny, so get ready for that. So this is probably one of my most toxic traits, <laughs> and I think it comes from the fact that some of my limiting beliefs that I've had about myself growing up and, you know, through my early adulthood, um, stem from the fact that I feel like 
failure or not being perfect or whatever is what resulted in some of the more scary or darker times in my life. Like the fact that I made a mistake, the fact that I didn't think it through or look before I leaped or whatever you want to call it. And there's some truth to that, but also like life just kind of happens. <laughs> like things, things happen. Nothing is ever, ever going to be perfect. And like to freeze yourself or punish yourself or believe that good things can't happen to you or that you deserve bad things to happen to you when you're not perfect. That is what causes people to live super small, unhappy lives. And in fact, the most unhappy points in my life have been the ones that were me playing it really small and just acting so much out of fear. Like, as I said in the last point, I feel like fear has been running the show for me in so many ways for such a long time. And again, the more I examine like why, it doesn't actually make any sense that I'm continuing to do this because it's not getting me any results. Nothing happens. Like, I don't take risks or do things that I want to do because I'm afraid. And I'm afraid I'll be unhappy if I do it for some reason or something bad will happen. But like sitting around and not going after what I want is still making me unhappy. So doesn't it make sense that I should be more proactive? This is that Catalyst AC11. I told you it was like a funny color. So you're actually supposed to use an activator, which is this nutrient activating mist. And it helps a little bit with the crazy looking color. So excuse me while I apply that. It's not just because it helps with the color, but... It helps the product actually penetrate deeper into your skin. This is hard to talk and do this at the same time. With practice, I'll get better because I know there's going to be people in the comment section that are like, oh, you're supposed to rub upwards. <laughs> like, I know that, but this is just kind of hard to do. This Catalyst AC11 is a vitamin C serum with DNA repair, and it's amazing, but I can't wear it during the day because of the color and stuff it turns, but it's got so many good ingredients for your skin. Highly recommend. This is my Osmosis Epic Skin Tool. It's kind of like a microneedler, but not really. It does a lot of the similar things, but it doesn't actually penetrate the skin or make you bleed or anything like that. I'll leave information about it down below. And I'm gonna turn red and pink, so get ready for it. So one of the things about perfection that I just spoke about a minute ago is that I used to really believe that if I didn't try to make things as perfect as possible, if anything bad happened with them, then it was because it wasn't perfect enough. Again, not taking into account that the whole world does not like wait with bated breath for me to screw up. It's a weird thing some people can get into their head. Um, you know, it's a really popular sentiment that people are not thinking about as much as about us as much as we think they are. They're busy thinking about themselves and thinking about how much they think everyone's thinking about them. It's just this constant like weird idea we get that people are just sitting around just waiting for us to screw up. Because again, like what else are you afraid of? If you're if something is holding you back so often we are afraid of like what's going to happen in the eyes of the people that are around us or people from our past or this idea that social media is even watching us is kind of funny because everyone on social media is kind of putting on a show for themselves anyway. They're putting out content that reflects back to them a version of themselves that they truly think is lovable and worthwhile. At the end of the day, that's what it is. Like I'm not saying that people don't put their personality and stuff on social media, but if you actually think about it, most people are creating social media to let themselves see themselves in a highly edited, curated light that's not real because people don't post a lot of the real stuff on social media. We know that people don't advertise their worst days. If you think about it like that and stop like getting caught up in comparison traps and thinking that you're not good enough because you don't have a life similar to what like other people have and you tend to think that like, you know, you can't take certain steps towards the things that you want because everything's not perfect enough. Like, first of all, again, like I said a little while ago, we can love imperfect people and imperfect situations almost to a fault sometimes. We just do not give the same grace to ourselves. But like perfectionism can very easily be a form of procrastination or a reason not to execute on the things that you want. And I'm just trying to make a case for like, Stop getting caught up in perfection. It doesn't exist. No one has it. The people that you admire and look up to the most get called terrible names every day too. Like, it's kind of hard to fall in love with yourself if you're expecting yourself to be something that no one else is. And that again, 
no one else you know is either, and yet you still love them. So like, why is it so hard for us to love ourselves if we're not perfect? This is a Lemieux TGF booster. I'll write down what this actually does in the description box, but I've been told, not me personally, but I've heard that this underneath a mask like does something amazing to the skin. And since I'm about to sheet mask, I thought I'd try it out. So I'm gonna pop on this sheet mask for a little bit and when it gets done and I can talk again, I will come back and finish this up. While I'm waiting for my mask to finish drying, this is the Lemieux Ionized Oxygen Infuser. Today we're gonna find out if it's a giant uh, expensive mist. My kid was making fun of me for it, but the oxygen aspect of this is really good for your skin for a lot of reasons. I'll talk about it more later, but that's what I'm doing. By the way, I do not do a skincare routine this serious every single week. I do, or every single day, I do something like this every week. I do something a little different all the time. Like today I'm putting a lot of moisture and hydration in my skin and I'm going to do a little bit of facial massage, but there's some nights where I just do skincare and do uh, gua sha. There's nights where I just do like a bunch of oils on my skin and that's all I do. I just kind of go off of either what I feel like doing or what I feel like my skin needs. This is the Oh My Glow Activator for this device. And this is the Oh My Glow Serum. Apparently you can put any serums in here as long as they're water-based, but I just wanted to try this out and see what I thought. And apparently this is going to have like pearlescent qualities to it, so I'm gonna look super glowy right away. But I'm gonna take this off. Ah, this is my Refa Carrot. I'm just gonna do a little facial massage while this little bit of serum is drying. So relaxing. I have so much tension in my jaw that like sometimes I just sit here and rub out my jaw. Rub out, no, <laughs> and rub my jaw. So the next point I wanna make to you guys about how to fall in love with yourself is to tighten up your circle. And this is something I've been talking about on my channel for a very, very long time. I think it's super important if you're going to fall in love with yourself to only let people around you that love the person you're trying to fall in love with. I mean, it makes sense, right? Like if you were in love with another person, let's say you're in love with a dude, you're not gonna want a lot of people around that don't like him too. But again, we tend to do this with ourselves so easily where we'll just like out of habit or out of fear or whatever, just continue to let people or situations around us because it's just a habit. I mean, I have said a million times also that I don't think this is limited to IRL stuff. I think it's very important to remember this for things like your digital space. If things on your digital space are making you feel like crap, probably need to get rid of it. I mean, I think some of us might be in frenemy cycles. I know that the times in my life when I had the most frenemies was when I had a lot of friends and that's because the quality of friend tends to diminish when you have so many and it's harder to like keep eyes, if you will, on people when there's so many of them. Like my circle is very small <laughs> and if uh, loose lips sink ships, I would know who was behind it because I don't tell anybody anything but like three people and I mean, some people might think that's kind of lonely. I don't, <laughs> like it's made my life easier. The quality of my friends is so much better than it used to be. And on top of that, like it's all people that are supportive of each other, positive about each other. And we all like ourselves. So we're able to like each other more. Again, like the main lesson of this video is like RuPaul said, if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen up in here? Anyway, yeah, and sometimes the limiting beliefs that we're working on trying to get rid of, and one of the other points I made, again, could have been installed by people around us and keeping those people around that are just constantly pressing on these insecurities and teaching you not to love yourself, like, who is that for? Who's that for? Also, if your circle is enabling you to make really poor decisions, this is something that happens a lot when people are in lower places in life. Like the times in my life that I was in a lower place and like I drank and partied a lot because I was unhappy, they all were doing the same thing. And I, I can't say if it's because they were unhappy. I know that's because I was unhappy. But once I stopped drinking and partying, like those friendships kind of went away on their own because those people wanted to enable me to do things that just weren't what I wanted to do anymore and were not serving me in the way that 
I needed my relationships with other people to serve me. I know that sounds weird that you think your relationships should serve you, but they should. If they're not, they're taking from you and vice versa. If you're not giving your best and your all and your kindest and most supportive self to other people, what is the point of having them around? I just don't get it. So yeah, people who enable you, people who don't like for you to think for yourself, they gotta go, man. I've said this many times. I think we really underestimate our sphere of influence and how much it contributes to where we are in life. Oh, wait, so I'm gonna turn this on. Okay, so in life, I am radiant. These cameras always make me look way worse <laughs> than I actually do. Um, in real life, it's like harsh, it's studio lighting. That's why like a lot of makeup looks better under these lighting, lightings under this light, whatever. <laughs> but in person, I am dazzling. <laughs> so I gotta test this out for a little bit longer to let you guys know what I think about it, but I'm definitely gonna use it in the morning because my skin looks so glowy and it feels so hydrated right now. Typically when I'm trying to be better about my retin-A, which I'm breaking out, so I'm trying to be a lot more, uh, like all of this discoloration you see on my face is acne scars. I don't actually have but like one active breakout right now. So retin-A is like what I do to get rid of breakouts. That's why I have to be on it. But it is really rough on your skin. And the next day I usually feel a lot of dryness and tightness, but right now, I feel luscious. <laughs> so another thing I think you really need to do in order to fall in love with yourself is to work on forgiving yourself for the big mistakes you've made in your life. This is something I have been struggling with for years, learning how to, this goes kind of part and parcel with the whole conversation about perfection. If you have a hard time forgiving yourself, but you have no problem forgiving other people for all kinds of bullshit, and I think it's important to examine why that is. This is my night cream, which is the Truth Treatments Omega-6 Healing Balm. It is the trick, the master trick to being able to use Retin-A, but not have your skin peeling and flaking and just in terrible condition. Like I have to use this when I'm using Retin-A. It's the only thing I have ever found that soothes my skin, that hydrated it. I don't peel at all when I use this. I don't get as red. It just the whole point of this is to heal your skin so it just really stops it from getting irritated. And it's really, really luxurious feeling too. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the Wind Marrakesh Light. This is my favorite facial oil right now. It smells, oh, it's like one of my favorite smells in the world. It kind of smells like incense, which I love. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this. I've got so much hydration on the skin right now, but. This is a really lightweight oil, and the point of it is just to provide a little bit of slip for a little bit of gua sha I wanna do before we wrap this up. And I'm gonna gua sha while I finish my points in this video. Side note, this is the most fun I've had filming in a long time. If my energy seems a little chill, it's cause I'm very relaxed. <laughs> I just enjoy doing my skincare so much. So learning how to forgive yourself is crucial in learning how to love yourself, like I said, because it's a kindness we bestow to all kinds of people all the time. Um, but we have such a hard do time doing it for ourselves. And I think it's, this is going to sound kind of weird, but I was thinking about like Facebook, right? I think they keep you tethered to the past unnecessarily. I've been kind of wondering to myself for a while if it's natural or makes any sense for us to stay in touch with every person we've ever met in our entire lives. Um, I don't know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if there's a point to it. I feel like for me personally, it makes me feel kind of stuck in like situations that I don't, I wanna move past in my life. But like I said, there's been times in my life when I wasn't the person I wanted to be. And sometimes like, I can live in the past way too much. And living in the past causes you to make so many decisions about your present um, based on a person you're not anymore. And if we're going through all this work to like fall in love with ourselves and treat ourselves the best, wouldn't it make sense to forgive ourselves? I can make a whole video on why it's important to forgive yourself. Um, but yeah, that's something I've been thinking about a lot and trying to 
let things go, move past things, and just focus on the future and stop living in the past so much. That's contributing to me not being able to forgive myself. My sunless tan is also just breaking up terribly. Mm. Not cute. <laughs> the last thing I'm gonna leave you guys with today is that it's important to remember to do things that make you feel like you. And that's not always an easy thing to do, especially as you get older. And I've made lots of videos, and especially when you feel like you lose yourself. I made lots of videos about how to get yourself back, how to bounce back, how not to let yourself go. And at the end of the day, you know, we can contribute or attribute all of that to the physical. And that is part of it, I think, for some people. But to me, to really like lose yourself, to let yourself go and like not be yourself, not do the things that make you feel like you is such a personal tragedy. <laughs> like the times in my life that I have loved myself the least are the times when I'm not letting myself be myself or I feel shame and judgment around being myself, even like the things I just like to do. So for me, it's things like skincare and hair and glowy things. It's like a whole <laughs> way of living my life that I enjoy. If I ever stop doing those things, it's a sign that I am not treating myself very well and I've like kind of fallen out of love with myself. It's the same thing with real life relationships. The things that you do with your partner when your relationship is a good in a good place or when you're happy tend to die out when that's no longer the case and again we're so quick to fight for relationships and try to get things back the way they were when it felt the best we don't tend to do that with ourselves as much and i think that's a shame which is really kind of the point of the video also a chance for me to sit here and do my skincare on camera and just hang out with you guys so I'm gonna to cut to tomorrow, Whitney, and she's gonna wrap up this video. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, thank you to the patrons. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe and stick around for more content. Let me know if there's any particular devices or products or skin treatments you wanna see me do in future videos just like this. I had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, even today, as I was getting ready to film, I couldn't believe like how nice and plump and dewy and soft and smooth and moisturized my skin was. So everything I used last night in the order I used it in was a 10 out of 10 for me. All that being said, I hope you're having an amazing day and I will catch you in the next one.